Hi, my name is Mrs. Myers and I teach AP US history and welcome to Back to School Night. To learn a little bit about me, this is my 21st year of teaching. I have been teaching APUSH since 2014, although I did teach it for another school year prior to that, but I've been doing it consistently since 2014. I'm a fourth generation educator, so I've grown up around education and it is in my blood for sure. My bachelor's degree is from the University of Arizona. It's in political science. My master's degree is from Concordia University in Irvine, and it's a focus on curriculum and instruction, which is one of my passions as well. I am currently the U.S. history team leader, which means that I am the one responsible for getting our teams together. That includes AP U.S. and helping to develop um, assessments and have meetings and discuss curriculum and all that. I also, over the summer, did 25 hours of course development leading for the U.S. history curriculum to create a kind of a course outline for our online program. I have been involved in the History Teacher Leadership Network for San Bernardino and Riverside Counties for the last eight years. And one of the things that we do is to bring in scholars. We meet once a month and we share strategies and everything. I have been a cooperating teacher four times. I currently have a teacher candidate that's working with me in my U.S. history classes that may from time to time observe the AP class as well. I consider myself to be a lifelong learner. And to that end, this past summer, I spent over 30 hours attending scholar Q&A sessions through the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History. This is an organization that is nonprofit that talks about primary sources and, and content and everything. And it was a wonderful opportunity for me not only to take a class on the American presidents, but also to jump on different Zoom calls with scholars from all over different universities all over the country on a wide variety of uh, topics. And I think that it will greatly help with APUS this year. I'm really excited to bring a lot of that content knowledge into the class. My passions, as I've already mentioned, are learning. I feel like you can learn something new every day and I embrace the opportunity to learn. I attend lots of professional development opportunities. I travel the world. I have been to all 50 states and all seven continents and I like to take my camera wherever I go and share photos with my students of those places where history happened because to be able to stand where history happened is one of the coolest things I think in the world. And obviously, I have a passion for history, and U.S. history is definitely my area of expertise and passion. About our class, this first semester, we are going to cover a lot of centuries. We're going to cover from 1491 all the way up till 1898. So we're going to cover six different units. We've already just finished our first unit, and we're moving on to second. But we are going to cover pre-Columbian America with Native American tribes that existed prior to the first contact by Europeans. And then we're going to go all the way to the Gilded Age, which ends in the around the turn of the century, around 1900. We're going to use writing is going to be a key focus of our curriculum as well, not only content. But in order to prepare students well for the AP exam, we're going to focus this semester on short answer questions and really getting those to be good. We're going to also look at long essay questions as well as historical context, thesis, and document analysis. Second semester, we are going to start with 1890, American imperialism, and we're gonna go all the way to present. And our writing focus is going to be on document-based questions, as well as extended analysis and gaining those extra points on a DBQ, and continuing to hone our short answer questions and long essays, as well as practicing and reviewing for the exam. My goals for your students this year, are not only to be successful in the AP exam in May, which I put as the fourth bullet point, but even more so to like history more in June than they do right now. And I realize some of your students love history and they're very passionate about it, but I know that a lot of students have maybe not ever been excited about history. They haven't found that story that has hooked them, or perhaps it's a activity that I do. I also really want them to see how relevant history is to our lives and the fact that it's not just a bunch of dates and facts in the past, but it is something that we constantly need to study so that we can be better in the future. And I really am passionate about having students vote once they become 18. And to that end, I want them to be more civically engaged and realize that one person can make a difference, one vote does matter, and that even though they are not yet old enough to vote, that they do have the power to make changes. In this class, we're not just going to learn about history. We're going to do history. Some of the ways we'll do that is through examining primary sources, just like a historian would, looking at events that don't have a solution. There's a lot of history mysteries, as I call them, and we're going to use our critical thinking skills to examine those. And we're also going to make connections between events in the past, but also events today. Next, about the AP program. This is a college-level class 
taught in a high school setting. So the focus is going to be both on content from this wide range of time periods, as I mentioned, 1491 to present, but it's also going to focus on skills, on a historical thinking skills, as I mentioned. The content will be mostly acquired through video lectures and textbook reading, although there will be ample opportunity for students to ask questions and for us to clarify and me to be able to share some really good stories about history because that's what makes it fun. But in class, my goal is to focus really on the skills and honing those and looking at analyzing documents and making connections and all of that. Our exams are patterned exactly after the AP exam so that your students will feel comfortable the day of the exam. While we are online, there will be some modifications though in order to accommodate the online learning model. The expectations that I have, and this is really going right now while we are online, we have live Zoom meetings twice a week on the days of class on Wednesdays and Fridays. And I right now I'm doing a mostly small group and probably will continue that way. And my request is that they participate. On Friday, we were able to have some good discussions and I want it to continue. So I would ask that if possible, they have their cameras on if they need to be able to sit against a wall or something be, to have a background that they're OK with sharing with everyone. I'm OK with that. Um, I would like them to share their opinions, to comment. I want this to be a rich discussion environment, just like it would be in our classroom. The expectation from the district is that they are doing five to six hours of learning per week. Now, this is a variety of synchronous, which is live, our Zoom meetings, asynchronous and independent work. So the asynchronous and independent work is going to take a lot of different shapes, including videos to watch of my lectures. I've taken all my lectures and I'm putting them into videos for them to look at historical thinking skills practice, analyzing primary sources, discussion boards through Canvas, writing practice, uh, reading textual, longer texts like historians from historians, AP classroom and much more. Another really essential expectation is that they communicate with their teachers and become self-advocates because in a normal classroom, I'm able to walk around and see where students are struggling, but I can't do that online as easily. So I need them to ask me questions. I need them to share their struggles so that I can help them. If I need to do reteaching or if they need intervention, I need them to reach out to me. So my expectations, again, are that they are attending and participating lively in our Zoom meetings, that they are using the five to six hours of learning and keeping up with it and doing the assignments, even if they're not doing it the exact hours of class. I'm OK with that as long as they're getting the work done and that they communicate. How you can help your student. You can help them by creating a schedule for reading, studying assignments, especially during online learning. I know that it is much more flexible, but at the same time can lead them to potentially falling behind if they don't set aside those five to six hours devoted to this AP class. Please help them understand that this class is really a model for the growth mindset. This is a year long preparation for an AP exam. And the key is improving, not mastery until May. So even if they don't get something right away, do not tell them not to get discouraged. Tell them this is a marathon, not a sprint and that they will get there. And I've had students every single year who struggle in the beginning, who maybe don't do as well on tests as they hope, and they hit it out of the park when it comes time for the AP exam because of all of the things that we do throughout the year. So please also encourage them to self-advocate, like I mentioned before. Have them ask for help when they don't understand, ask for more practice tools, and attend interventions if they need to. I'm here for them, and I want them to know that. Why your students should take the AP exam. They will sign up for the AP exam in October. And I want you to know that our AP US course has a very high pass rate. Over the last six years that we've had a new style of an exam, we have averaged in 75% pass, pass rate. And in 2019, because 2019 was the last full exam, this last year we had a different exam, 20% of students that took the test earned five. So that speaks volumes to what how well students are, are prepared for the exam. It's one of the highest pass rates of any AP class at CHS, but also in the district. One of the, thing, the reasons we've been so successful is that we finish our curriculum by the beginning of April and we spend the whole next month, the whole month of April and the beginning of May reviewing for the exam. We have typically have after school sessions. We work during intervention period during class to really review and go through and prepare students. Our exams match identically to the style of the AP exam. So students have reported that they came back feeling like the exam was easy and they were prepared for it because they knew the format. There were no surprises, no gotchas. And think of it this way, that if your student passes and gets college credit, they'll save thousands of dollars in college tuition. 
I am including here a few study resources for your students to help them be successful. We have a brand new textbook this year, which I'm very excited about. We asked students to help us in choosing the textbook, and they reported that this one was very user friendly and student focused. In addition, I recommend that they get a review book. My favorite is the Kaplan AP US History because it is updated to go directly, all of the multiple choice, all of the practice and everything is directly aligned with the format of the exam, unlike some of the other review books. We also have a resource that's going to be AP Classroom, and I'm going to be at, begin to open it up for practice questions. And the Gilder Lehrman Institute of American History, which they have the resource for, has a study guide where it has videos and it has documents that they can look at, a timeline, all kinds of great resources. Plus, I provide them lots in class. That is all. You can contact me through my email, and students can also contact me through Canvas. I'm looking forward to a great year with your students. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.